Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on where or when in the world you are watching this newscast. Welcome to This is the Week That Was in Virtualization Cloud and EUC, brought to you by the Virtualization Practice. I am Tom Howarth, and this is the latest of our video news roundups. Headlines. Veeam at 10 years old, and Ratmir, the CEO of the company, has stepped down. Oracle have lost a law case against HP. IBM software layer have partnered with VMware Horizon Air. The first major Brexit tech fallout has happened as Dell has announced a major price hike. Now some weekly rumours. There are rumours afoot that Intel are going to sell, trying to offload their security division formerly known as McAfee. And Nutanix are allegedly in negotiations to buy Pernix data. So, Veeam, what a journey, 10 years. Ratmi has been at the head for that whole time. He's now let, he's now stepped down, uh, but he's gonna keep a, a hand in with the company. Peter, sorry, William Largent has become the new CEO. So onwards and upwards to Veeam. Hard to believe, 10 years old. Oracle have lost a law case against HP. This is regarding their support for the Itanium chip. HP and Intel are the only people who actually do the Itanium. It is effectively a dead technology, although no one will officially admit it. Uh, Oracle allegedly had a, well it's no longer allegedly because it's been proven in court, had an agreement with HP to continue supporting Itaniums. And in 2011, they stopped support of Itanium chipsets for their DBs, and obviously HP sued. It went to court, they lost, and Oracle had to rescind their end of life agreement, and they're still doing support and developing Itanium databases at the minute. However, Oracle also eventually, the case went to a jury where they have been recently awarded a $3 billion damages. Now, Oracle obviously being Oracle, are not gonna take this lying down, have already stated that they are going to appeal both the original decision again with the judge over the contract, because they don't believe they have a contract in perpetuum, and also against the damages. So, once again, Oracle's legal department are in the news. Now, IBM Softlayer have announced that they are partnering with VMware to provide v VMware Horizon Air services. This is a, quite a bit of a win for Softlayer, I think. Although Horizon Air hasn't really set or vCloud or Horizon Air Cloud or whatever it's called this week hasn't exactly set the world on fire. The products and services it provides are actually quite good. So third party in it with Softlayer is a win for IBM as it gets more money, more numbers onto their cloud and it's also a win for VMware. So good bit of business there. Now, unless you've been living under a rock somewhere on the moon for the last month or so, you couldn't help but notice that there's been a, a wee little election in the UK on a new referendum about leaving the European Union. Now that went the way of the Brexiteers and financial chaos has ensured, ensued since. Currently the dollar is trading at its highest against the pound ever, which is okay for those people who are paid for in dollars in the UK because they're rolling in clover at the minute, but not for anybody else. It's okay for exporters, I suppose, as well, apart from the fact that importing the raw materials is obviously more expensive but from a tech po point of view the first major rounds of price hikes have been a, have been announced Dell have mentioned that they are going to increase their prices in view of the very very weak pound so weekly rumors rumors are that Intel are trying to offload their security vision, the company formerly known as McAfee. Uh, they've 
it's no secret that this acquisition hasn't exactly set the world on fire. McAfee has problems in integration. They were late to market with the Move product for to to deal similar functionality to Trend and and other products, and they've been trying to integrate the functionality of McAfee into their chipsets for six years and it's still not happened so not a too unexpected situation if it comes across just would be interested to see who would actually want to buy it in other news or other rumors apparently Nutanix are in negotiation to buy Pernix data again up until Nutanix.net conference I couldn't see any reason as to why this would be happening but however with the release of their storage nodes the storage only nodes Nutanix are going to are moving away from the concept of locality or it appears to be they're moving away from the concept of data locality because if they're only stor serving storage from these nodes they're not going to be local to the actual compute side of it so a caching technology would make very very good sense is Pernix data the right deal for them? Mm. They're very, very closely tied to VMware. Uh, the, C the CEO, CTO of Pernix data are both ex VMware guys, one's ex Oracle. The CTO was the guy who actually developed VMFS. It's heavily integrated into VMFS, it's heavily integrated into VMware. How easy would it be put to port this to AV? Acropolis, mm, probably not as difficult as you might think. They do share a reasonable amount of common code sets. Uh, yes, the kernel's obviously proprietary. But, yeah, we'll see. If it comes off, it could be a good deal for, for Nutanix. I can't see the Pernix data people getting that much out of it, to be perfectly honest. Okay, news from our sponsors. As already mentioned, there has been a change at the top in VM in Veeam. Peter McKay has been appointed as president and CAO, COO even, and William Largent has been promoted to become the new CEO after Ratmir Timoshev and Andrei Baranov stepped down. Now both those the founders are not actually leaving the company, they're still going to be involved with product management and marketing and the likes but they no longer have day-to-day -day control our sponsor Christie Sp software have introduced clone manager this is a real-time replication service that produces hot standbys of live systems for instant recovery it's a nice little product I quite like it high trust have collaborated with VMware RSA Intel and NIST on the development of the NIST IR 7904 which is a concept blueprint to be used when implemented trusting trusted geolocation in the cloud excuse me puppet labs they're gearing up for their puppet conf 2006 conference in san diego on the 19th to the 21st of october they've released their speaker lineup and quite an interesting lineup it is now details can be found on their website or in the event calendars on the TVP site. They've also released their 2016 State of DevOps report and the Puppet founder, Luke Caris, I hope I've can I can it, can it, I hope I pronounced that right, probably not, has been named as EY Entrepreneur of the Year in the Pacific Northwest, so kudos to him for that. Now, SwiftStack, as we already said, they've won the major deal with uh, Bet365, and they're also the power behind Ancestry.com's Kubernetes and OpenStack-based infrastructure. And they've been included in Red Herring's list of top 100 private companies in North America. So, well done to them. Now, Xenos are running a survey based around modern monitoring. Uh, the deadline for answering their questions is the 13th of July and a link can be found at excuse me a minute a link can be found at www.zenos 
dot com slash about slash news slash press slash modern hyphen monitoring hyphen survey hyphen now hyphen live hyphen xenos hyphen capture hyphen critical hyphen insights hyphen global hyphen it hyphen leaders bit of a mouthful and if you followed that you're a better the person than i but you should also be able to find it on this site it's under their press release environments uh, they're also going to be at cisco live so if you are in las vegas on the 14th between the 10th and 14th of july for the conference you can find them at booth 1037 now all that remains is to thank you for listening and to remind you that if you see anything that you think is newsworthy please forward it to news at the virtualization practice.com